Hi, in this video we're going to be sharing with you some proven tips on the best ways to fast track and grow a profitable property portfolio. Indeed, we'll show you some actionable tips on how to overcome challenges and most importantly show you why this is something we think is worth doing. I've consistently grown a profitable property portfolio over the last two decades. Adam's doing the same thing now. There's no magic silver bullet, it's just a series of small things and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Jess. I'm Adam. And we're landlords as well as letting agents. We're managing and growing our own portfolios as well as those for uh, our clients as the lettings business. Um, we make videos like these to be helpful to landlords like you. Hopefully you'll find it useful and uh, we want you to be successful, earn more, have less hassle and get your time Indeed. back. So, so recently we hosted a, a live webinar uh, for some um, inner circle members of For The Landlords, that they, they've joined For The Landlords. Um, it's something we do often, just be helpful, we like to be helpful. Free um, as well. It's free. In, in the audience there was a mixture of experienced landlords and beginners and also people who hadn't even bought their first property yet. They all had one thing in common, they were feeling a little bit frustrated, they'd signed up to this webinar so they were feeling a little bit frustrated uh, with how slow their property portfolio was growing. Some were yep. struggling, struggling to get it going, some were struggling to get it going fast enough, um, all sorts of different situations but uh, yeah, one thing in common, they'd asked for some proven techniques to grow the property portfolio. What was identifying what was holding people back and then the barriers and give us some tips. So um, Adam and I, we thought about the questions yep. uh, before the before it and there were essentially four, um, four key points, four key points <clears throat> that we had to make. Uh, and we've broken it up for you today now into four videos. So here's what Adam and I had to say to our live audience. We'll cut to that now. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Right then, number, number three, buy the right stuff. Build your property portfolio out of um, the right building blocks. Yeah, so definitely. So you, 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 coming back to having the plan, point number one was have, have a plan. Um, point number two, make sure you've got enough cash to sustain you, so you, that's, that's, that's the, uh, the fuel if you like. You want reliable, consistently profitable, and easy to find, that's important, yep. look after, fix, keep compliant, whatever, manage, uh, and, and rent properties. You want, you want all that reliability built into the things that you buy. So buy the right stuff. Yeah. Um, you put all these four points together, This you go back to your plan and go, all right, you might re revisit it and say, that plan isn't working for me because it relies on me, me buying a unicorn property once a year and just can't find it. I mean, no, I've, definitely. I've, I've seen some landlords with that kind of thing as a plan. I'll buy this, this and this. Well, where are you going to find that then? Yeah. Well, I found one. You know, go, 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 go make a habit of finding them. You can't. Yeah. Um, there's always a, a deal of a lifetime. You'll probably get it yeah. once in a lifetime. Well, well maybe. No, you might if get you're looking. You get a deal of a lifetime, you might get once or twice every decade, but you know, they come along. Mm. But... Yeah, you can't if you if you're sitting there waiting for it forever, then um, you're not going to be going going forward. So, um, I think exactly what you said a minute ago to keep that momentum, you've got to you've got to find out what it is that you're buying and, and stick to it. Yeah, your so, most successful landlord just keep going. Buying the right stuff, yeah, it's it's something that is getting that's getting capital growth, good strong tenant demand in the right areas for a good, where a good tenant wants to live, mm. and you've built in equity at the start every time. Yeah because you've done some form of renovation work. Yeah. Should we talk about that? So I've, yeah. I've re written down here, make it almost, um, no, may not an almost, it is, this is a tick, this must be. You, you as professional property investors who want to grow a portfolio past the one or two that most landlords have, you've got to create some value, some equity on every purchase. Really, really yeah. simply, what you pay for the property what if any you spend on fixing it in any way? You could be fixing a legal problem, you could be fixing a hole in the roof, whatever you spend on it. So purchase price plus the fix is less than what it's worth. So there's a profit in it. You Builders do it all the time. Builders buy a mm. house, do yeah. it up and flip it and make a profit. You know it happens. Just pick the kind of property that 
It's not a build. It's not a, a, a four bedroom detached mansion that you put electric gates on, render it white, put grey windows on, flog it on for three hundred grand more, which is what the builder's doing. Yeah, probably. Um, it's a well for us. It's a two or three bed terrace family home. Bit of a wreck. Bit of a deal upper. Buy it cheap. Add some value. And um, the builder would would and could do that. They'd flog it on. They'd make some money. They'd, they wouldn't make as much as the the white rendered one with grey windows. But sure. They'd make a bit. Sure. Um, but the reason you don't do the white one with ren rendering the grey windows is because the rent versus the, I don't know, whatever it is, half a million pound, million pound house, you're not going to rent it out for the right amount. You need the two or three bed terrace house where the rent versus what you've paid for is right. But the underlying thing is you bought it cheap, you added value, and if you sold it, you'd make a profit. So build your property portfolio out of building blocks that are intrinsically good deals. Yeah. yeah. Like they, they stack. Um, it is possible. Builders flip houses for profit all the time. Um, so if we talk about... Um, they, they develop to sell, we develop to rent. We don't know. Same principle. So go on, let's talk about what we, what we know it is for us. Um, I said it's a two or three bed residential house, mm -hmm. normally. Um, of course, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. say of course. Lots of people say, well, I'll, I'll do this in a converted pub or... Yeah, some people try to be too clever, or yeah. some. But yeah, the two areas where people fall down, and that I've regularly seen is <clears throat> they try to be too clever, find something that you know sounds really exciting, maybe yeah, like you say, a, a pub conversion into mm -hmm. some flats, which mm -hmm. isn't easy to find, and lots of planning permission required, etc. Or they think they need to buy a house a little bit similar to the one they've got. But maybe a one bedroom less, they pay too um, much. and it's just you know they live in a six hundred grand house, so they think they need to buy a three hundred grand house because yeah. they couldn't imagine anyone wanting to live in a hundred grand house, yeah. you know, and that's just simply Which is not where true. Sixty-five percent of the UK live. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that's the, the yeah. I mean, I you mentioned at the start, people find out what you do, you, you know, and they ask, start asking you loads of questions. Yeah. I get it on the school run all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask you this? Can I just mm. ask you that? And I'm like, well, why? You know, so someone will think mm. I'm thinking of buying a house, um, you know, down the road there. Like, no, go no. across town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the the standard thing is mm. um, most landlords. If you're thinking about being, about being a landlord, you've probably got some money money in your pocket, unlike most people. Sad to say, but it's true, isn't it? So you're thinking, you imagine the kind of house you live in, and you think, well, I just buy one a little bit like yeah. that. And yeah, and they also say things like, um, I want to buy in this area because I think it will get more capital growth. Mm. And I think to myself, well, it's already quite expensive yeah. in that an expensive <laughs> area. So anyone who's owned houses in that area for the last 20 years plus has had lots of good capital growth on them. They're not going to go up in value in the next 20 years as quickly and as in as much as they have in the previous 20. Go and buy in the area that's going to do what that area's done between now and the next 20 years, um, where it might not look as obvious. I think that's worth like when people that's buy worth When people buy anything, they buy crypto when it's... At the top? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, what, look what everybody else made. So I need to buy some of that now. Yeah, yeah. Like people do that with all sorts it. of things. Yeah. They do it yeah. with whatever. Yeah. Watches, yeah. wine, yeah. cars, everything. Yeah. Um, no, go and buy it. Uh, get in there early. Yeah. This is a great area. It's gone mm. up in value loads. Mm. I'll buy into it. Yeah, Does yeah, that's not right. make sense. No. Because it's done it already. You, it, it would have been, you'd have been the smart guy if you just said five years ago, this is a great area. It's going to go up in value. I will buy into it. Yeah. You can't say no. It has done, therefore it's going to continue to. It's actually less likely to. It's already done its thing. You need to find the area where it's going to happen. And actually, it's the slightly more run-down area. Because that's every, everywhere, with very little exceptions, is getting better, regenerating, mm. getting... That's everywhere, you know. I mean, there's very few places that are... That are um, you know, if you imagine a, a, a not very nice estate, I mean, it can just languish and stay bad not many places no. where a council doesn't go in i mean nottingham's a great example it's had it had some pretty horrible looking places didn't it gotcha it hasn't got any now council mm. goes in well there, there's our priority that's where we're going to knock this down create that yeah. get rid of those rabbit run criminal places yeah, well, yeah that's what they want mm -hmm. to think, block the place off where criminals can run away yeah, and, yeah, yeah. um take that horrible block down put some nice gardens in put a park in and all of a sudden yeah. boom, 
the tram line all the way through the meadows. There's parts of Nottingham where they've, the value. they've flattened 60s built yeah. Yeah, yeah. what were council flats and yeah. houses and then now they've, they've gone out obviously yeah. to private house builders and built eco homes and all of that yeah. and they're worth a fortune and areas regenerate, yeah? Areas regenerate. So look Anywhere where so. close to an Aldi or a little, I've always said. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm. So, they, um, no, they do. Up, totally. That is their strategy. They buy, uh, they buy, they put stores. If you look, go and look at where Aldi's and Lidl's are. Now they're popping up in the posh areas too, but traditionally, mm. that's what they did. Yep. So for us, the right stuff is, to summarise, um, it's a run-down two or three bedroom residential house in an area where you can see, and I'll put here a natural, I'll put about 8% yield. So what that means is we're going for a higher than 8% yield and we're going for um, a much higher return on capital employed and return on investment. But actually, if you can just look at it and say, rent, you know, 100 grand house, Rents out for seven or eight hundred pounds a month. You're in the right ballpark, as opposed to a three hundred thousand pound house rents out for twelve hundred quid, quid a month. You know, you, you just got to look at the area, what you're going to end up with. That's just a, to to sort of key you into get you get you eyed in. It's not actually what you're going to end up with, but you're in a, in a naturally eight percent plus area. Uh, you're going to do it up. You're going to rent it out. You're going to refinance it to get some of the capital back out, and you're going to probably add some of that renovation money. Uh, sorry, um, remortgage money to the rental profits because we bought the right house and there is a profit, a rental, um, and you're going to go again. As Adam says, um, if you can find an area with regeneration happening, um, you're going to get capital growth over the long term and you might be able to, hopefully going to be able to keep doing that and you keep putting that, that capital uh, back in. But for me, it's always been slow and steady steps. Yeah. You talk about clients that you speak to or landlords you speak to, trying to be a bit too clever sometimes. There's a, yeah. Trying to push you it. You always speak to someone. Trying to get it too cheap or do something on the renovation that doesn't quite work or whatever it is. The, the other thing that I'll, I'd, I'd like to mention is even just building from scratch mm. or... Um, should we talk about HMOs and service accommodation? Cause yeah, thinking, can do. Now, I'm not saying that's going too clever... Maybe service accommodation was, or maybe. maybe. Um, yeah, I think any anyone who's gone and spent a lot of money on a service accommodation thing in the last year is an exception to that. But you can yeah, carry on. Get yeah, unstuck on. soon because yeah. they perhaps haven't factored in all the changes that have come in yeah. this year on it. Yeah. Someone who's owned it for a while and has made lots of money on it is probably going to yeah. accept that. I, I would imagine. I, I, this is so. Anyway, trying to be a bit too clever. HMOs, mm. I think, are a sensible thing. Uh, as a house and multiple occupation, I think that is a. A, a string to your bow that you're going to want. I wouldn't say buy your first one as an HMO unless, no. unless maybe, maybe, but they've got to be. And right a good things. mortgage broker would say if you don't own any True. buy to let property, don't yeah. do HMOs first because you'll struggle with financing it. It's a little bit trickier, but a five or six eight bed HMO is a sensible thing to, for a landlord to know how to buy, put together. There's a lot more legislation around it, yeah. so don't take it lightly. But you know, it's not, I wouldn't say that's pushing it too far. True. But again, it's not. Um, it's not a complete panacea. It's more expensive. There's more capital involved. There's more um, uh, work involved. There's more risk involved because of all the compliance. But yes, there's some more money involved. Service accommodation. The thing I was going to say there is, I would imagine, and I know a couple, landlords who have been into service accommodation for the last 30 years, they call it holiday lets or you know um, pod hotels or apart yep. hotels. They're not going to come unstuck because they know what they're doing. Yep. They are... A specialist at that they actually run a business they have people who answer the phones to take the bookings they have um, cleaners in vans with clean towels and make sure the toilet paper gets changed yeah. every time so they do it right a business though. the kind yeah. of people that are going to come unstuck are the kind of people who were landlords with a with a house and they're, they're just trying to do it to get a little bit of extra but they're not really fully committed to yeah. it it's a completely different business <coughs> i think if you're trying to just ring more income out of a lettings business as opposed to acknowledging it's a completely different business and I've got to set myself up for it then that's where you'll come and stop that's the only thing I'd, I'd add to service accommodation it's, it's another business it's another layer we we rent plenty I've just done just done one I've just done a service accommodation um, building I'm not going to run it <laughs> <laughs> um, no you know, I've just rented it out to some people who are going to run it. And, I've, and, and because it's there, and I know they're going to take a margin out of it, I've, I've rented it for slightly more. Yeah. I've got a longer term lease and they're going to do all the, all the repairs yeah, yeah. and maintenance. That's the advantage to, to me as a landlord. And I know they're going to make another 30 grand a year out of it. Great, good luck to them. It's, it's a job that's worth 
It's 30, a job. 30 grand a year and I don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. That's yeah. it, that's fine. Yeah. So um, small steady steps is what I'll put there. Um, anything else on buying the right kind of property? I think, you can kind of, I think we've covered the headline yeah, things. I think, yeah. I think you, you can sort of feed it back into the plan. I mean, we the could, we could sit plan. here and talk for hours. No, I can. You know? Yeah, you certainly Always. can. But on any of these four topics, we could do, make each one of these last yeah, uh, an entire webinar on yep. its own. So we can't go, you know, book yeah. a call with me if you want to ask, get some more sort of personal ideas yeah. across and, and have a deeper conversation, feel free. So I've got um, just taking this one key point buying the right stuff back up the list you know if you if you take it back up to um, uh, invest with a plan you can see how that informs it so you're buying yeah. the right stuff that's part of your plan um, cash is king make sure you've got enough or, or some but, but preserve it obviously it makes all that ridiculous things say make you've got what you've got but you've got to preserve it buying the right stuff allows you to keep re rinsing repeating mm -hmm. giving the certainty the clarity that there, there is a cookie cutter model and that's a sensible thing to have so buy the right stuff number four give us a like follow join the join the channel join us sign up on our on our website for the landlords.com to our mailing list follow us on facebook instagram TikTok, like and all, all the social media platforms and Ring the bell, oh, yeah, ring likey, that. thumbs up, all those things. It really helps us. If you're getting value out of the channel, please subscribe and show your support. Indeed.